This is Sable. She'll be our traveling companion for the next little while. Together, we're about to embark on a life-changing adventure. So, no one can begrudge her for taking a moment to appreciate the enormity of what comes next. By day's end, she'll have forged a mask, built a bike, and unlocked a dormant power. All that's the easy part though. Saying goodbye to everyone she loves is a different matter entirely. Mosey in the vast plains of a desert. Just a girl and her bike. This is day one of her gliding. A ride or passage trip out of her sheltered life and into the wider world. Your objective? To take in the sights, sounds and everything your newfound surrounds have to offer. But where exactly do we start? That, my friend, can be more than a little daunting at first. Sometimes you just gotta take a deep breath, put one foot in front of the other, and make a choice. While you're given some basic guidance on where to go at first, the rest is really up to you. Maybe there's an intriguing landmark on the horizon that has captured your imagination. I mean, that's a good enough reason as any to set a waypoint and get moseying. Tracking down a cartographer's hot air balloon can be helpful on the navigation front too. And there just so happens to be one in every region. It's always a good idea to take advantage of their high vantage points to scout your next move. You can even buy a map, detailing all the local points of interest. But really, there'll be something neat in whatever direction you choose. Best not to overthink it. And don't be afraid to get sidetracked on the way to your destination. That's half the fun. You probably don't need me to point out that Sable's visuals are the thing of breathtaking beauty. It's easily one of the prettiest games I've ever played, which is a testament to an incredible art direction. I mean, just look at the view. Just look at any view. If you're anything like me, sometimes you'll just want to get off the bike, sit down and take it all in. Look, there's a method to my madness here. Sable is all about exploration, seeing what's around the next corner, seeing what's over the horizon. Every glimpse of footage just might spoil that, or at least take something away from your own journey. I'm not entirely sure this mosey should be watched by someone who hasn't experienced the game yet, but a time lapse will give you an opportunity to get a more contained taste of what Sable has to offer. I won't be offended if you choose to opt out of the next, slightly more spoilery section. I hope by that point you already have gotten a distinct impression that this is something special because it really is. Sable's a game that genuinely feels good to play. I'm not even talking about gameplay or anything, but more the feeling it conjured in me as a player. There's just something so soothing and calm about the whole experience. One that's centered around the wide-eyed awe and wonder of being out in the world. One that's stoked curiosity and the spirit of adventure in every aspect of its design. The excitement of being in Sable's shoes was infectious. The visuals and gameplay have something in common. They're both on the minimalist side. Sable plays like the Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, if it was a combat-free experience. It's become something of a cliche, but the old notion that if you can see it, you can go there rings true here. And if you're familiar with Breath of the Wild, you'll know the importance of stamina on that front. Stamina determines how far you can sprint, and how far you can climb before exhaustion takes hold. That can be make or break out here, so it's best to pay attention and know your limits. Let me tell you friend, sometimes the summit of an elaborate climb can be so close, but so far. <laughs> Thankfully, Sable has a bit of a safety net to ensure her gliding doesn't come to an abrupt end. See, now the whole gliding name of this particular rite of passage makes sense, right? That's the long dormant power I alluded to in the opening for what it's worth. Just another tool in the game's arsenal to ensure exploration remains a joyous experience. As for the stamina, you can absolutely improve your endurance too. Is that our cue for an epic training montage set to an 80s power ballad? No, no, this is something more of a scavenger hunt persuasion. Every so often while exploring, you'll come across one of these guys. What's their deal? Unassuming, sure, but they're the key to going the distance when it comes to the climbing thing. They're chum, and you best believe their queen wants to see their safe return. 
she's all too happy to reward Sable for her assistance too, in the form of incremental stamina upgrades. Since climbing is such an important way to navigate the world, it's a mutually beneficial arrangement. So what exactly does the day-to-day -day of a glide-in entail? Well, people out here are all too happy to put an enthusiastic glider to work. It doesn't take long for your quest log to be filled with all manner of objectives to pursue. Maybe a scrapper wants the spoils of a downed spaceship. Maybe a machinist wants you to scale a tower to repair a malfunctioned wind turbine. That right there really is a glider's bread and butter. Fetch quests for the most part, usually the bane of video gaming design. But here, strangely enough, I didn't mind them so much. They're just a means to an end. I wanted to scale the downed spaceship. I wanted to climb the wind turbine's tower. While exploration is often its own reward, quests give direction and structure in how you go about it. And hey, they're key to tracking down badges too. Something essential to the whole gliding thing. You might have noticed that everyone seems to be wearing a mask. What's up with that? Some sort of fashion trend that's taken the world by storm? Nope, it's more a symbolic way of showing a person's role or specialty in society. Acquiring three badges of the same kind can be traded for a mask associated with that path. Get three cartographer badges for example and you've got yourself a shiny cartographer mask. So what then? Time to call it a day? Gliding over? Not quite. Experience all the world has to offer in order to find your place in it is the entire point. Sable will be given the opportunity to reinvent herself as many times as she sees fit. Maybe the climber's life speaks to her. Maybe she is drawn to a cartographer's hot air balloon. There are no wrong choices here and zero pressure to commit to anything until Glyden's end. The glider's life can be solitary and nomadic. So much of the game at its best is just in the quiet moments of downtime, running across the vast plains. That's a good thing since you'll be doing so much of it. It's absolutely a world though that rewards such thorough exploration. From bustling cities to remote outposts, otherworldly salt flats to lush forest terrain. It's one of beautifully diverse environments, places that feel lived in with interesting people and unique cultures to immerse yourself. The world building here is masterful. I thoroughly enjoyed deciphering its history and lore. Sable and her bike Samoon are a team. Where they go, they go together. Samoon is every bit as customizable as Sable herself. Heads up though, it's best not to stray too far away while doing the whole exploring thing. It's a long walk back to civilization otherwise. Your best bet is to keep track of its whereabouts with your compass. Fast traveling to the nearest settlement is also a tried and true way to reunite the pair. You can attempt to call it to your position, sure, but that only worked about half of the time. Truth be told, Sable's a little on the janky side, with more than its fair share of bugs. Sometimes I can kill a game, but here, I was more than willing to endure, if not overlook them. Everything else about the experience was so wonderful. If the glitches were the price for entry, so be it. Just don't expect complete polish and you'll be fine. Despite an impression of vast deserts that span forever, the world of Sable is smaller than it seems. That holds true for Sable's gliding as well, especially when her homecoming fast approaches. There's a sense that a much larger passage of time has progressed than the actual number of in-game days. Maybe because of all the monumental changes in Sable, captured so vividly through writing and design. From the nervous excitement and melancholy of leaving what she knows, to that liberating sense of freedom and wide-eyed wonder of getting out into the world. And here we are. Just through that pass is where we all started. Home. She returns more seasoned and capable, a different person to the one who left. While it's bittersweet to be at the end of one adventure, it's exciting to be at the start of another. So, no one can begrudge us for taking a moment to appreciate the enormity of what comes next.